Hello everybody, my name is Zach, aka The Weather Gamer, bringing you the team unveiling, including new team, and my dog is just like popping her head up because she wants to say hi, uh, bringing you the unveiling of my new team, as well as the new team's draft for a new league that I'm in, um, it's the FWL D League, so it's not the main league, it's the D League, um, it's, if I make it, if I do well enough in the D League, I could get bumped to the main league, so... Um, this is a more challenging league for me than WWC. This is not with friends. This is with complete strangers, um, people I've never met before. So this is really the first time I'm going to have to actually need my front office to test and work through this. Yes, I know there's no music right now. Um, quick little thing. This video is very, very late being recorded. It will go up the second I'm done with this, but we are already in week three of FWL. Um... I have been messing around. I know WWC uploads are really behind. I think LMC is now behind as well. Um, I tried using editing software. I have literally spent the last two weeks pounding my head against a wall trying to deal with editing softwares, just trying various different ones. Uh -uh, not working. And I'm not paying for an editing software right now because I'm broke. Um, broke college student problems. So, issues. That's why we're going back to the old format of how I recorded and upload in just lower quality and have all the bloopers and all that like me talking to my dog and it not looking professional I'll get there eventually I just can't do it financially right now and I haven't found a good editing software by myself that has worked I've tried several suggestions they aren't doing what I need them to do more than likely I'm just gonna have to pay for something so for now we're back to the old format anyways um yeah so FWL D League so this draft was mainly driven by me. I've drafted this team for the most part. However, I did get um, advice from my front office. They helped me with picks, um, and I'll talk about those as we go along, um, some of the things and all that. But I think it's time that we unveil our new team. And to do that, what better way than to kick off with the music which I'm going to be changing between musics here real quick um, with what I thought was a fitting song for the new team so new team new slash old team we are bringing back the Chicago Charizard X all right now to switch back to the regular music um, turn that down Yes, we are rebranding the Chicago Charizards, Charizard X's. So for those of you that saw maybe the one DSL video that went up when I was a part of the Deathly Subscriber League, that is peaking my mic. Music, calm down a little bit. Thank you. Um, I ran under a different logo um, than this. I ran under a, I ran under the name Chicago Charizards X instead of Chicago, Chicago Charizard X. Um, and so that logo was good. I have nothing wrong with that logo with what the artist did. But as most of you know, I have an artist that does the majority of my work, Griffin Feathers, whose stuff will be in the description down below, as always. Go show him some love on Twitter for me. Um, I wanted to have another... When I couldn't use the Bear Ticks, because in the main FWL League, there is a Chicago Bear Ticks team. I know, sad. We can't run the Bear Ticks. Sorry to those of you that are fans of the Bear Ticks. They won't be... They won't be a part of this league, at least. Um, I'm going to keep trying to rock with the Bear Ticks as much as possible. They're kind of my default team. But this logo is really nice um, by Griffin. Really clean. And this actually makes me kind of want to split time between the Bear Ticks and the Charizards. So, um, the original plan for this logo, uh, before Griffin blew me out of the water as usual, um, was... I was going to rebrand the Charizard X, Charizards X to the Chicago Charizards and just straight Charizard because, for those of you that don't know, Charizard's my favorite Pokemon. Charmander was my first starter. I had a Charizard in Fire Red, which was the first game I ever played, and I refused to let it get to level 100. As soon as it hit 99, I stopped training it, um, except when I was playing weaker Mons because... I didn't want it to get to 100 because after the whole Ratatata eradicate thing with your rival on the ship where 
eradic you kill your opponent's eradicate basically is what happens i believe if i remember the storyline correctly it's been a while since i played fire red that should be something i bring to the channel as a fire red playthrough sometime um anyways i didn't want charizard to die because i figured at level 100 charizard dies like level 100 was the max level you could get and so when things turn to level 100 they die and then i don't have my charizard anymore so um charizard's always been one of my favorites my favorite fire starter period so um, I was going to run with the Chicago Charizards, it was going to be like, Chicago, hey phone, thank you for going off and reminding me that I need to put you on vibrate. Professor Willow, I don't care, I'm sorry, I, I truly do not care right now. Thank you. Um, anyways, um, uh, it was going to be like the Chicago Skyline with, uh, Zard Y and regular Zard on the sides and then x kind of in the center is the menacing one and griffin blew it out of the water with this for me so instead we rebranded to the chicago charizard x um for fwl and this is the wonderful logo that he made for me and with that said let's get into this so this draft had um quite a bit of interesting stuff um the tiers in this draft are they're not what I'm used to. They were really strange. It threw a lot of my uh, front office off um, when I started mentioning tears to them. Uh, for example, um, just looking here to see what was changed. Uh, Pelipper was moved to tier two. Um, Scolipede was moved to tier two. Uh, Savali is a tier two mon. Um, trying to see what else that stood out was really crazy that got moved down. Um, Alola Ninetales was moved to tier three. Um, Aloma Mola was kicked up to tier three. Um, I'm just looking through the tier list real quick. Uh, Greninja without, uh, its second, its hidden ability was moved to tier three. Um, Liking Rock Midday was moved up to, or Dusk was moved up to tier three. Mandibuzz was kicked down to tier three. Um, Needle Queen being tier three. Um, what else did they? Stack Attacka was a tier three. Um, then in tier four, they moved Araquanid down to tier four. Blaziken with Blaze is in tier four. Um, Cofagrigus is in tier four. was surprising uh mega heracross was a tier two mega uh mega sharp peep uh not mega sharpito um mega t-tar was a tier two mega um and then some things that i not oh they moved so no soul steel is always there um some things that were allowed in that i'd never dealt with before hoopa u was in here um necrozma was moved up to tier one um for this league um so those were some of the things like hoopa u being in there i'd never been in a league with hoopa u before so i ended up with the number one overall pick i had choice of everything and i had numerous people telling me take this take this take this take this and i said nope we are, uh, let me get to the right screen here. We are taking Victini. I know, first overall pick, you take Victini, which is a Mon that in most draft leagues goes at the end of the first round or potentially doesn't go until round two. Um, I don't really care. I wanted to run Victini on, in a league, and I don't think Victini would have made it 20 picks back to me because it was a wheel style draft, so I picked first, and then I didn't get to pick again until 20, but then I get 21. And then I have to wait through the cycle again, which sucks being 
on the wheel um, when you're the first wheel. I would much rather be the tenth wheel um, or in the middle of the draft. Um, but I took Victini. I wanted Victini. I wanted to use Victini in numerous leagues. I just have never had the chance to draft it because other teams draft it. Um, and so I wanted Victini. And that's what I did. I took Victini round one. I've caught a lot of flack for it, but you know, I don't care. Victini has an ability that boosts its accuracy 20%. So most moves aren't going to miss at that point. Or if they do, it's very rare that they miss. Victini can run physical, it can run special, it can be a trick room sweeper with um, weakness policy, it can be choice banded, it can be choice scarfed, it can be choice specs, it can be life orb, expert belt. Um, you can run a defensive, slightly defensive Victini if you want. It's base 100s across the board, so it's got good average stats. Um, and if you need any, any sort of idea what a Victini can do, Go check out Dan, a.k.a. A-Drive. That man has done so much work with a Victini. And I want to try a Victini myself. I want to see if I can make Victini work for myself. It's a Mon that I'm not... I've never used... Sorry, I got an itch on my face here. Calm down. Um, it's a Mon I've never gotten to use, and it's a Mon that I've used when I've laddered um, on Showdown, just practicing. So I wanted to try it, and I thought, you know, this is a great offensive start to the team. Speaking of offense, um, so going into round two, there was a lot of debate. We knew what our round three pick was going to be on the back end of the wheel, um, our t the 21st pick. We knew what that was going to be. Um, it was more, what do we pair with Victini? And it was back and forth and back and forth between several Mons. Um, Hoopa U was being considered. Um, we were gearing up to take Hoopa U and the Mon we took at 21, which I'll talk about when I jump to it. And literally the 19th pick, the pick right before me, Hoopa U goes down. So it's a very good thing we had a backup in Garchomp. Now, I've used Mega Garchomp in a couple leagues and had a lot of fun with it. It's It was Kill Leader in one league that I was in. Um, it just destroys teams. I had Garchomp on my GPC team um, for the two weeks that that lasted. Garchomp is a mon that I have used the Mega, but I wanted to try using regular Garchomp. It's a very powerful Mon, very... It can run physical or special, but it's more on the physical side. Uh, rough Skin Rocky Helmet is a great um, combo if you need to chip um, with a defensive Garchomp. Having something like... Um, this thing has good move coverage, so you can run quite a few different Z Crystals on it if I wanted to make this one of my Z Captains, which I did end up at the end of the draft. You have to pick a tier one or two and a tier three and below z captain so guard chomp is our one of our z captains right now um scarf chomp can do a lot of work um just great coverage yes it's weak to ice however victini with its fire typing kind of helps um take care of that guard chomp having a ground typing also helps victini it can absorb some of those ground hits for victini um, if people try to earthquake victini and then this this by far so when this we're in the wheel now round three i take nine tails a tier three nine tails alolan form is an absolute steal this thing should 100 percent be tier two always should be tier two it is such a good good mon and it's one of my favorite mons and this now makes Four, three teams or four teams that I have Alolan Vulpix on my team. I had it in WWC. I tried to get Vulpix, Alolan Vulpix for LMC. I have it for FWL. I had it in GPC. Um, yeah, this thing is just, it's such a good mon. Um, and this paired with a scarfed Garchomp, um, people were way raving about this um, wheel pick because... You send this out, you set up Aurora Veil, and then you have a Scarfed Garchomp in Aurora Veil. And Aurora Veil, for those who don't know, sets up basically Light Screen and Reflect, so it halves the damage you take from both physical and special type moves, making a Scarfed Chomp very dangerous. Or a Scarfed Victini behind it, very or Banded Victini. Just any, any setup sweep, uh, not setup sweep, but any powerhouse that can punch through walls. And this thing itself can also punch through walls. Um, so far, I've gotten a very offensive core built here 
um, with nine tails of Actini and Garchomp. Um, like I said, Gar this thing can set up dual screens. It can be a Scarfer. It can be a Specs user. Um, it can set up Sweep with Nasty Plot. Has access to Fairy and um, Ice Steel. Uh, stab, not steal. Stab. Um, dropping blizzards, dropping moon blasts. It gets freeze dry to deal with bulky water types um, that neither Victini nor Garchomp appreciate. Um, it takes those ice hits for Garchomp. Um, conversely, Victini takes the steel and the um, poison type, or doesn't really take, yeah, because it's psychic, so it's resisted. Takes the steel and the poison type hits that nine tails is weak to. Garchomp takes the um, steel type hits very nicely. Um, I do know that I'm starting to build a bit of a rocks weakness with nine tails and Victini. I'm also building a bit of a uh, yeah, that's the only weakness, the big weakness here. But I thought getting tier three alone in nine tails I couldn't pass up. It was too big of a steal. Um, this mon is just it's got great speed, great special attack. Um, and so many different options that can be run with it. And it really, it also gives me some defensive capabilities by setting up those screens. This is where the draft got interesting for us too. Um, after these two picks, while we were waiting for it to come back around, we started thinking, okay, what are we going to do? We've got the potential for Mega. We need a Mega because Megas were starting to come off the board. What are we doing for Omega? Are we trying to get points out of Omega? Are we trying to do this, 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 this? Um, at one point, we were consider. I needed defense. Like, I legit need defense on this team. Because I'm very, very offensive with very little defense. So we're thinking, okay, what about Omega Ag Agron type of situation? Um, that thing is hugely bulky and can also be an offensive threat. What about um, the other thing, too, with this league? You don't have to Mega the turn you come in. Um, you don't have to Mega at all, actually, I believe, if I remember correctly. But I know for sure you don't have to Mega the turn you come in. Um, so we could take something like Sharpedo and not Mega and then get the speed boost plus one speed sweep type of thing. Um, so that was something we were considering. Um, we knew it was going to be a Mega. We just didn't know what Mega yet. And we knew we needed defense. So, we started thinking, okay, um, what pairs well with Victini? Like, if we're going to choice ban, a choice lock of Victini, what would pair well? What can we use that's both defensive and allow us to kind of pivot around? So, we kind of split instead. Mega Beedrill was the mega pick that we came on the next wheel. Um, this thing has zero defense, basically. I think it's base 40 defense, so... This thing gets wrecked pretty easily, but it gets adaptability, and it has base 145 attack. Adaptability doubles your stab boost instead of one and a half, so poison jab, X scissor, um, becomes super, super effective, um, super, super powerful on this thing. This thing gets a U-turn, so okay, now we have Victini, um, we have to switch Victini out. And we need, or this thing's sitting out there and we need to pivot into Victini. We can just U-turn, fast U-turn into Victini, take a resisted hit, and then Victini gets to click its move. We pull Victini out and basically it allows us some momentum. Um, it gives us a U-turn pivoter momentum. It gives us more offense. This team is stacked offensively. Um, this thing has a very, very fast speed uh, stat. I think it even outclips Mega Aerodactyl. I think Jolly of this hits 423, and Mega Arrow only hits like 416, something like that. It's fast, it's hard hitting, it's just super, super frail. This is a glass cannon for this team, but a glass cannon that I like. I've never used Mega Beedrill. Um, I wanted Mega Scissor. Like, Mega Scissor, it was going to be, back when I drafted Garchomp, it was going to be Victini, Mega Scissor, Alolan Ninetales. Um... And then we'd pick up a dragon at some point um, later in the draft. And Mega Scissor went off the board. So then um, I was like, okay, well, we could draft Escavalier down the line to catch a Steel Bug type since we missed out on Scissor. And most of you know I love Escavalier. I think it's an underused mine. 
and it's very good. I've had S Cavalier on a lot of teams as well. Um, how I was approaching this draft too, like I wanted a mix. I wanted some mons that I was familiar with, and I wanted some mons that I had no clue how to use. That way I could, um, that way I could expand into future drafts when some of the mons that I normally like to use, like Chandelier or Alolan Ninetales, um, Zara Aura, some of the stuff that I really love using or to get taken out from underneath me, then I know I've got, okay, I can do this, I can do this, this, then that. So uh, we grabbed Mega Beedrill um, just to try and fill some of that core. And to pair with Mega Beedrill, we grabbed Mandibuzz. Now, most of you know I hate playing defense. I hate defensive teams. I hate bulky teams. I hate... I am a hyper-offensive player. I tend to do study from the school of Duncan, um, Duncan knee deep, and play hyper-offense. Just bam, 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 hit as hard as possible. Realizing just how weak my team was to getting one shot if I didn't break through them, we needed defense. And the fact that Mandibuzz is also sitting in Tier 3 instead of Tier 2, my front office decided, okay, we're not taking Sharpedo Omega. We still need a dark type. We need a defogger because um, outside of Garchomp, Beedrill dies to rocks very fast. Victini dies to rocks very fast. Ninetales dies to rocks very fast. We currently have no hazard remover. Mandibuzz gives us a solid defogger. Uh, Mandibuzz is incredibly stupidly defensive. Like, it is bulky beyond belief. Uh, max defense, max HP. This thing takes no damage from a lot of things. Um, also putting in, um, over, it has the ability overcoat, so it can't be hit by like sandstorm powder moves. Um, uh, da, 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 what's the other one? Uh, hail, which works very well if not, I wanna bring nine tails with hail just to chip, um, which is probably what'll end up happening most of the time as it comes with hail, just because it threatens the Aurora Veil that way. Um, but having Mandibuzz with Overcoat, I don't take Hail Damage, so I don't get Whittled Down. You throw a Rocky Helmet on this thing, and you're punishing. Like, Rocky Helmet, max HP, max defense. You're taking some damage to try and knock this thing down. And then this thing gets Roost, it can Defog, it gets U-Turn, so you can U-Turn around. Um, it's got access to both Physical and Special. Um... We've talked about what happens for a setup Zygarde potentially. Um, this thing with foul play against a setup Zygarde could do some damage. Um, all in all, Mandibuzz is just like, it's a very defensive bulky mon. It's still weak to rocks, being that it's flying type. But as bulky as it is, it can reliably defog for the most part. So that's where we liked it. Speaking of rocks, um, coming back around to the next set of wheels um nothing really major happened we didn't get uh we didn't really get sniped that much um outside of hoopa u uh so far in the draft that was really the main thing that we wanted as a front office and that i wanted that went down i decided coming back around it was time to get um a little more bulk to pair with mandibuzz but also pick up our steel type because we had that fairy dragon but we hadn't finished the Fairy Dragon Steel Core. And also we have a Fire Type. We haven't started, got a Water or a Grass Type for our Fire Water Grass Core. I grabbed Empoleon. Empoleon is another Mon that I have used in the past. Not a lot, but I have used. Um, it's actually a very good Mon. I love Empoleon. Um, I want to use it in more leagues. I just have to figure out where I use it. But... Uh, Empoleon, it gives us water typing, it gives us a reliable rocker, it gives us another defogger because I have such a weakness to rocks. Um, unfortunately, we are getting a ground weakness now, which is where Mandibuzz comes in, but and Ninetales, but Victini, Beedrill, and Empoleon are all weak to ground, um, so we have a major ground and a major rock weakness at this point. Um, but yeah, this thing reliably defogs, it can rock it can roar out setup sweepers um it can scald burn it can flash cannon it's just 
it's a good mon. Again, go take a look at how Dan, aka Drive, or go look at Deathly I Am in the APA, I believe it was, in APA. They both used Empoleon very well, and I like Empoleon and wanted to try and use it as well. Um, and see if I could pull off some of the stuff that they did. Pairing with Empoleon, we went with Araquid, and yes, we took two bulky water types back to back. But this helps me fill out my defensive core even more. Um, Araquinid gives me a sticky web user, reliable sticky web user, um, because of the bulk. Um, Araquinid also can do a lot of different things. It is my tier 4 and lower Z captain. Um, so we could run a water Z liquidation on this thing. We could do a whole bunch of things with this thing. It, sticky webs, I can... So it slows things down so B drill doesn't have to run max speed. We wouldn't necessarily need max speed Garchomp. Victini doesn't need speed investment with webs. Um, it forces them to defog webs, which gives me a chance to get something switched in. Um, we can run the meme set of Duncan Knee Deep if we want, where we bring a Soak Infestation Toxic Mirror Coat against a special attacker or a soak toxic infestation liquidation or lunge to drop defense or drop attack and make my opponent useless basically um just because it would allow soak changes to a water type so steel types can get poisoned um toxic to toxic weaken and then infestation to just add on top of the toxic weakening and try to clear things out um, before Araquanid goes down from taking too much um, damage. Granted, Araquanid's very bulky too. Has access to water absorb, so I could absorb water type hits going after Victini. Um, also has water bubble, which prevents it from getting hit by fire type moves um, to protect B drill. Um, if need be. So that's where we picked up Araquanid. Um, double water was questioned quite a bit, but you know, and also now I have double bug. Um, I wanted to try Araquanid and paired, just decided to pair it with Empoleon on this wheel. Next round. Okay, so this is where we did get sniped again. Um, our next pick was not Hitmonlee. We were going to take Gorgeist next. Gorgeist would have been huge on this team. We'd get our Ghost Stab, and it would have given us a Grass type. Um, Gorgeist has four different forms, which we would have had access to. We could have defensive forms. We could have offensive forms. Gorgeist just would have glued this team together very nicely, and unfortunately, it went three picks before I got to pick. Um, losing Gorgeist really, really hurt. Um, it left us scrambling, and we kind of just decided to go with Hitmonlee. We needed a Fighting type. Hitmonlee also can rapid spin. Um, actually, we didn't decide. I decided to go for Hitmonlee. Um, we were really split on this one. Um, two people in my front office wanted Hitmon top um, for Intimidate. I wanted Hitmonlee because Hitmonlee is a monster. First of all, it has access to Limber, so it can be paralyzed. Second of all, it has access to Reckless. Reckless Life Orb High Jump Kick breaks a lot of Pokemon. Um, just does a ton of damage. So I went with Hitmonlee. Um, rapid Spin as well. Um, some more Hazard Remover, Removal. Ugh, sorry. More Hazard Removal if we don't want to bring um, Mandibuzz to remove Hazards or Empoleon has a bad matchup. We have Hitmonlee capable of Rapid Spinning out if need be. We paired that with another, um, another, uh, da, 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 thinking, processing, processing, another hazard remover in, uh, Togekiss. Togekiss, to me, was a mon. I needed a tier two. I didn't really know what to grab out of tier two. Tier two with this, with Mandibuzz being moved out, Nine Tails being moved out, and several other things, um, just tier two didn't look appeasing to me most of the draft. Um, there weren't really any mons that I wanted out of it, or I picked up mons that 
had the typings of mons that were left in tier 2 already. So I went with Togekiss. Um, Togekiss is another momentum mon, so now we can momentum out with Beedrill, with Togekiss, with Mandibuzz. Victini, if we don't choice lock, it gets access to U-Turn. So we can U-Turn with Beedrill, U-Turn with Victini. Baton pass with Togekiss, U-Turn with Mandibuzz, just to keep momentum on our side, keep momentum running. Um, Togekiss is also very nice because it can wish, per, wish pass on baton passing. Um, it's very defensive as well. You can throw Rocky Helmet leftovers um, just to punish or make it extend longer. Um, it has access to Hustle, so physical type moves have a higher base power, but accuracy is unfortunately dropped. It has Super Luck, so your chances of a crit happening are... Um, higher. It also has Serene Grace, so if you wanted to run like Thunder Wave Air Slash for para hacksing, um, that Serene Grace or Flinch hacksing, um, that gets boosted. Um, this thing can defog, it can heal bell to cure statuses across the board on the team. Um, it's just, it's a really good cleric mon. Um, yes, it gives us another flying type, yes, it gives us another fairy type. Yes, we are now incredibly weak to not only ground, but ice kind of runs up on us outside of Victini and Hitmonlee. Ice can be a major issue for this team as well. But I figured having something that can wish pass and all of that would be huge for this team just to give us some reliable recovery to spread around the team. Going into our last pair... Um, we really didn't know what to do with these last two picks off the top of head. Um, I wanted we needed grass type. I wanted ghost. We needed grass rock ghost and electric at this point, and there's no ghost rock yet. Which uh, Nintendo get on that? We need a ghost rock type really bad, please. Um, there's no grass. Well, Rotom Mo is the grass electric, but that was taken a long time ago. So um, we needed something. Um, for those two and there were a lot of split decisions since we lost Gorgeist I wanted to take okay get back on the slides Trevenant I wanted to take Trevenant um, yes Trevenant is slower compared to Gorgeist on average um, I believe if I'm remembering that correctly um, but it's got access to Drain Punch. It's got access to Horn Leech for recovery. It has Wood Hammer. It has Earthquake. It has Shadow Claw. It has Harvest, which allows me to recycle berries over and over again. Um, it has Frisk, which would allow me to check for Scarfers or something like that. Um, it can be super, super bulky with an Assault Vest as well. Um... Or it can be choice banded and just be hyper offensive. Gives me that grass to fill out my fire or my firewater grass core. Gives me some ghost stab. Gives me a decent move pool. It's just a little on the slow side for my liking, but it was better than nothing since we lost Gorgeist. And then the final pick was a toss up. I had to take a tier five um, because there were no other choices. Um, Tier 5, like Tier 2, was not appeasing to me at all. I didn't really care for anything out of there. Um, but I needed an electric type, so my options were kind of limited. I could take Electrode, I could take Emolga, I could take Zed Strika, I could take quite a few different things I could take with it. And in, I decided to go with Electrode. Electrode is a mod I have used in the past, I used it in DSL. Um, it has static, so I can potentially get physical attackers with para, um, paralyzing and slow them down. Um, I could get, um, or I get the ability to have aftermath, so if I get O-Code, I can do a sizable chunk back to the O-Coing Mon. Uh, I don't remember the other thing I could do with it. Um, it's really, really fast. It's got a pretty decent special attack, um, so I could specs it um, if I wanted to. It does allow me to set up light screen and reflect. It does get dual screens, 
Um, that's not as good as Ninetales Alolan, but if I need to not carry screens on Ninetales or Ninetales just has a terrible, terrible matchup, I could bring Electrode um, in instead um, and have Electrode set up the screens. I could also, if I need to, if I wanted to, I could go Max Attack, Choice Band, or Max Attack, Normal Gem, since this thing is so fast, and explode in front of something and take something down with me if I need to. So, um, Electrode, yeah, that was kind of my my decision. Um, I made that one, unfortunately, so the way my front office is, uh, three of the four members of my front office are on European time zones. Um, the other one is on uh, U.S. time zone, one of the U.S. time zones with me. Um, unfortunately, when we got to this pick, all the Europeans were asleep, and actually I think, because he's an hour ahead of me, I think Savage was also asleep. So I kind of just chose Electrode um, for familiarity st standpoint. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the team, so we're rocking with that Mega Beedrill, the Victini, the Togekiss, the Alolan Ninetales, which was tier 3, which was a steal, Mandibuzz, Araquanid, Electrode, Garchomp, Empoleon, Hitmonlee, and Trevenant. Um, this will be the team we rock with right now. We do have five free agent moves for the entire season, so if things aren't working out, we may see some changes. If I do make changes, I'll be sure to mention those prior to the week's team builder. Um, I won't make special videos because there's no point in making a five-minute video for that. But, yeah, this is going to be it. Uh, again, I want to thank... Uh, come on, catch up with me. Come on, there we go, there we go, there we go. Again, I want to thank Griffin Feathers for this wonderful logo. I am looking forward to FWL. Hopefully you guys are as well. I'm trying to keep Draft League content going. I know WWC is entering um, playoffs here shortly. We're still trying to make it at, um, make it into playoffs. Those battles should be coming up here very shortly. Now that I'm back to recording in the old format, I'll be getting everything caught up that I'm behind on. Um, just to work on that. Hopefully we can make some progress, um, show off some skills. I'm looking forward to learning and getting better at battling, like I always say. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I will see you guys in the next one. Check out the Discord down below if you want to hang out with me. Follow me on Twitter. I am trying to get back to streaming, um, so you can always check out Twitch. Um, and again, show Griffin some love on Twitter uh, for me. Just follow him, toss him a... Like, he's a great artist. He's done a lot of great work for me. As always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.